I think it's the collaboration and the gregarious uh, thing that cinema has uh, in terms of creating art with a bunch of other people and collaborating with directors. I just love that, you know, the, getting to try to be inside the mind and soul of a different person and, and understand that perspective and then figure out how to express that through my imagination and my ideas as well. I love that part of it. We're still warriors. This wealth should come to us. The first part of telling a story like this is learning and listening. To get to the level of intimacy you're talking about with the characters, and particularly the Osage, was try to be able to understand what it would have perhaps felt like to be there in Oklahoma in, in those times, and the fear and the not understanding what's going on, and, you know, all these murders. For that, it's more than research. It's really talking to the people and meeting a lot of Osage and family members of people who had been killed. So that was very moving and I think very important for our process. Everything that is exclusively Osage, when there are no white people around, we shot with a lookup table that was as naturalistic as possible in terms of color. We shot on film, negative, which I think is, is the best in, in terms of capturing the full depth of color in nature and in skin tone as well. But also one thing I learned in this process of research and talking to the Osage was how important that the sun is to them and the position of the sun. And even their towns and villages they build in relation to the travel of the sun. So I tried to bring the sun into the interiors where the Osage are doing their ceremonies or their meetings. All these have the presence of the sun. The scenes with Ernest and Hale and the white people were photographed with a lookup table that emulated autochrome, which is one of the first techniques of creating color for still photography. Their vision of the world, for me, or their memory of what was happening at that time, you know, later would be photography. We have also some newsreel footage and things like that. Dan Sasaki at Panavision helped us out we used a T-series anamorphic lenses, but Dan adapted them. And the result of it was that the image is a little less pristine, let's say. It's a tiny bit softer, so let's say more period, if you may. But also the flares are warm, and the overall image has a little warmth to it. So when you see the sun in different shots, it's not the blue flare of, let's say, the traditional anamorphic blue flare. It's more of a warm flare. Also, we used the Petzval anamorphic lenses which distort the edges of frame for certain scenes. We tested lots of lenses. Petzval was one of them. Also, again, the beginnings of photography, right? And we decided to use them as a lake motif in the shots of the dead Osage. And then we also used it for certain shots where death is coming. So it became a, sort of a representation of death, this distortion. And later, you, you know, you start seeing the representation of the Osage with a hand-cranked camera, which, by the way, is is his own camera, Bell and Howell, 1917, I believe, camera that we took to Panavision and, and they helped us uh, put it back in working order and, you know, helped us figure out the parallax because, uh, of course, they're not ref or reflex. So that was fun. And, and Trevor Loomis, the focus puller, learned the, the song. I don't remember what it is, but just to get the rhythm of the hand cranking, you know, all that stuff. Hi, Barbie! Hi, Ken! This year I have those two films, Barbie and Killers of the Flower Moon, out, and I shot them one after the other. Probably the constant there is the passion for cinema. Both uh, Greta Gerwig and Scorsese love movies. And that's just wonderful, you know, they have uh, also such knowledge of film and the things they love and enthusiasm for, you know, not just uh, making movies, but just watching movies. For Barbie, there were many references. Every Sunday we'd have, a, Greta called it Cinema Church or something like that. We went to a cinema and saw movies. Greta man manifests her joy for filmmaking in a different way than Scorsese. Greta is loud about it and laughs and jokes. Of course, the movie itself, you know, has this energy. 
there's inspiration everywhere, sometimes in the least expected moments for Barbie. The, there was a scene towards the end where the, this abstract place where it was like a heaven or something. We didn't know how to do that scene with Ruth and Barbie when they go together to this place and have a conversation. So we decided, okay, maybe we'll make it a, this environment with color. What color? My wife Monica and I, we went to an exhibit of Turner in London. We were doing, making the movie there and looking at Turner's paintings. It was like, hmm, maybe these colors of the sky. And, and that's what we did. We, we picked the colors of his different paintings and we put them into an animation which became the background and the what's lighting the people. Corsese also likes to joke around. He's, he's, he's very funny and very charming, but his set is quiet. You know, the concentration level is huge. You feel a focus that's uh, really particular and, and beautiful. So both are ways that I enjoy a lot. So I have the privilege of doing these two movies with these two incredible filmmakers.